Now let's move on to the Nigerian market, the NSE All Share Index. Gaining today it was up about six tenths of a percent to 36,043 points. We saw gainers include the likes of Portland Paint. Now that's a company that UAC has invested in. At least there has been an announcement that they will put in about 51. They, they will buy a 51 percent stake in that um, mid-tier player. We also had gainers including Forte Oil and Total Nigeria. Let's now move on to the retail banking space. Nigeria's Central Bank has deferred the implementation of its cashless policy charges on lodgements and withdrawals in the federal capital and five states to allow customers adjust to the new policy. Joining me to discuss this development and other matters relating to retail banking is Jude Anele, head of retail banking at Diamond Bank. Jude, thank you for joining us as always on our show. So uh, what do you think is sparking this change in, in the central bank's policy with respect to this cashless thing? We've seen it. Um, Fairly successful, I would say, in, like, in Lagos, and one was expecting that it would now move on to the other parts of the country. But for some reason, they have decided to move it, from what I'm gathering, to October. Yes, uh, well, the central bank just came out with that pronouncement today, that, though there has been no official communication on that, but I think that will come before the end of business today. But they've already advised banks, uh, so banks are ready so that they don't go charging customers unnecessarily if they're coming. Right. We suspect that the central bank has come to the realization that the infrastructure required to execute this uh, policy in these uh, states or towns like Aba, Odicha, Port Harcourt, Logun State, and Abuja, and Kano is not yet in place. And I think the House of uh, Representatives last week did actually advise CBN to maybe suspend that policy depending when all these things are in place. So I suspect that maybe they are trying to obey the call by the National Assembly to have a second look at it before implementation. Right, but let's move back to the SMEs and we're in a much higher interest rate environment, at least if you are looking at the yields uh, environment, monetary policy has been quite um, tight for, for a while and now we're seeing because of the exit of foreign investors from our bond market, yields in the fixed, um, fixed income market beginning to rise. I'm just wondering to what extent this is impacting the cost of capital for SMEs. Uh, clearly you deal with them, so what's happening there? Yes, of course, uh, the impact is not currently being felt, but I believe in another three weeks to four weeks, the impact will come to bear on the SMEs because most banks are also tight on capital. Okay, and most have gone out to look for capital to expand their business. And they find that it's very expensive borrowing out there because of this uh, ad flow or in uh, foreign direct investments in Nigeria. So we suspect that if nothing is done in the next one month or two, the impact will begin to trickle down because the capacity of bank to lend will be constrained. And if they must lend, of course, they must price in the scarcity of capital into the lending and then the cost will go up. Right. And the first place it will hit is the smaller medium-scale enterprise because those ones do not have the capacity to negotiate. The bigger companies may get away with lower rates, but those small, small businesses most likely would get hit most in terms of increase in rates. Yeah. But what's the risk rating of SMEs right now? I know that um, the likes of um, Diamond Bank have um, brought in some policies to try and reduce that by um, helping some of these SMEs um, become better businesses, better structured businesses, and to some extent that has reduced the cost of borrowing. But how would you rate SMEs in a broad sense in Nigeria right now? I think overall, like I keep saying, there's still a lot of work to be done to de-risk SMEs relative to their capacity to borrow. What is important really is this capacity of these businesses to manage the finance they get from banks or from any source. Right. And I think that that process of education, that process of capacity building, which most institutions, including CBN and SMIDA and all other interventions that are doing is helping. But I just believe that it is not enough. There's still much more to be done. It's just a select uh, MSME clusters that are being trained and developed. So I think the, the risking work should be more broad based and more banks should get involved in it and if that happens you will find that where there's capital scarcity in terms of rates because these small businesses have been the risk the rates at which you lend to them will still be below maybe sub 20 percent something closer to 15 percent is possible right. that's just where the risk lies right the risk to business survival yes okay okay let's talk a bit about some of the trends that i'm seeing in the sme space i'm seeing a lot more banks being um, quite aggressive about lending to SMEs, um, maybe uh, uh, having alliances with some consumer goods companies to, to, to have arrangements where people can buy things. I mean, so, so, sim things as simple, simple as um, tele um, phones, cell phones, um, tablets, etc. And so I get the sense that the appetite to lend to the consumer space is growing in Nigeria. Would you agree with that? 
I, I agree um, absolutely because, I mean, for banks, that's where the margin still lies. Right. Most uh, uh, countries in Europe right now are focusing more on SMEs. That's where you make money. If you go upstream to the big corporates, the margins have, have thinned out completely. Yeah. So, but of course, like the issue we raised it around risk, they are still struggling with the risk factor. But they realize that that's where the gold mine is now in banking. Right. And those that get it right will make a lot of money, and then the SMEs will be better for it. Right. But do you think this is elevating the um, the potential for non-performing loans, particularly in the SME space for many banks? Do you think this the the risk is elevated if they become more aggressive now? No, not, not exactly, because even the banks that are going into that space, or microfinance banks, they are going there cautiously. They are very cautious about it. I don't think the aggression is about reckless lending. Most of them are moving in there very cautiously. They are trying to understand the customer before they lend. They are trying to build some capacity before they lend and all that. So right. I don't see MPS growing in that area because most banks are getting it right because they are not moving in too quickly. They study the market before they go in. And they also lending clusters like they happen, they happens in Brazil. So and it helps.